Hey there, KK. Uh, hello. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's how you greet me? Oh, sorry. I... The young girl looks around her eyes catching on the bright purple pattern of the cheap plastic draped over the picnic table. She looks the man over. Dad? She asks, reluctantly. Yes, my girl. Were you expecting someone else? She stares, an unwavering suspicion in her eyes. What? What's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? It's your birthday, girl. The little one's face cycles through a range of emotions. Confusion and disbelief, mostly. Bright, twinkling lights pierce the night air, illuminating her face and turning her expression to wonder. Oh, I remember. This is the carnival. Of course you do. Can I go on the spinning UFO thing, please? Well, it's your party. You, uh, go anywhere you wish. Yay! She leaps from her seat at the table, nearly tripping over herself. The man sits down, folding his arms and staring after her as she runs, a hint of reminiscence in his eyes. Her feet slow to a halt after only a few steps. The girl stands there at the border of a small spit of land, lit by a yellowish pole-mounted lamp. The man's face drops. Beyond the dirt and patches of grass, darkness blankets the vague hints of carnival scenery in the near distance. Her shoulders drop slightly as she turns around. There's something wrong. I can't go any further. She reaches a hand out, waving it. It seems to vanish into the blackness. A howling wind wanders by, blowing a cloud of dust into the nothingness. There's no one here. Where are all the people? The man stares for a moment with glassy eyes. He shakes his head and wipes the smile back onto his face. Ah, uh, forget about that. I've got something way better anyway. He pops open a large, well-worn metal cooler and rolls up his sleeves. His hands dig into the box and lift out a sheet cake with white and purple icing. Thick lines spell out the words, Happy Birthday, Kay, across the plain-looking confection. Aw, cake! She squeals, the joy instantly returning to her formerly somber face. She skips her way back to the picnic table sitting on the wooden bench. The man smiles, genuinely this time, discreetly wiping a tear from the corner of his eye. Oh man, we're going to tear this up. Right, Tommy? She pauses, looking down at the empty space next to her, confusion creeping back into her eyes. She scans the dark horizon around the table as if searching for something or someone missing. Hold on, girl. Let me at least get the box open. He cuts an oversized slice from the cake and plops it down onto a floppy paper plate, setting it in front of the girl. Is that chocolate? Oh, I love chocolate. You're dang right it's chocolate. I know it's always been your favorite. Mmm. And this big giant piece is for me? Are you not the birthday girl? Yay. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, a cocktail of emotions swirl in his head, shooting down his spine and into his gut. He stutters. Yep. Uh, you're welcome, baby. He looks at her and their eyes meet, her face once again clouded with confusion. This cake is huge. Is this all for us? Where is everybody? The man's smile fades. His arms fold up again and he takes a deep breath in. You're not really my dad, are you? His eyes search the ground for something else to focus on. You look like me. She says, hopefully. His lower lip quivers slightly and his eyes close softly. The shadows of pain cast over his face. Damn it. He steadies his nerve and turns to face the girl. You are so... clever. You know that? So I've been told. She replies with a tinge of sarcasm. Kay, I have to tell you a little story. And then you can eat your cake and ask any questions you want, okay? Wait, no! First tell me who you are. I promise... I'll explain that. Just listen, Kay. The girl sits in silence, an obstinate twist on her mouth. <sighs> wow. I know that look. <laughs> Kay, you might be smart now, but... He pauses, searching for the words. When you grow up, you'll be one of the smartest women ever. 
Her brows curl into a questioning scowl. How do you know that? You will create a technology that has the potential to change the way human beings experience death. Your ideas will help people be able to live forever, in a way. He looks away, unable to face her bright, hopeful eyes. But there's going to be a problem. When you're older, you get sick. Even though you're so smart and so important and so loved, the world will take you away. Doesn't that happen to everyone? It's not supposed to. Not to someone like you. Not anymore. Something bad happens to you that's too sudden for us to react. There will be nothing anyone can do to stop it. The only thing that would be able to save you is your own invention. I know it won't make sense to you now, but you found a way to move a person's mind into a special network that you designed. You called it Project Heaven. Makes sense to me. That's a good name. The man stares, a hundred words hanging on the tip of his tongue. A faint, sad smile creeps in, showing through his eyes. You would say that. The system could have saved you. It was almost ready, but we just didn't make it in time. Your team did the best they could, but all they could recover was this one memory. Just one. A fragment from your seventh birthday party at the fair, the night your brother died. Wait, now you're not making sense. She shakes her head. If you're my dad, but you're clearly not, how do you know all this? And why are you telling me? Her brow furrows. And what do you mean Tommy died? He's right here. She turns back to the empty seat. He's supposed to be here. The man gazes at her, his face welling with despair, his nostrils flaring and his skin flushing red. What's going on? What exactly happens to me? You died, Mom. You're dead. Oh. Her eyes trail off into the darkness, shoulders slumping forward. I knew it. My dad didn't have green eyes. Her head tilts up towards him. You're my son? In a way. You're her, but just a small part of her. They couldn't save all of you, Mom. He reaches for her, and her small arms extend almost reflexively. The two embrace, and he sobs against her neck with his eyes clenched shut. I love you so much. I wish I'd told you a million more times while you were here. But I am here. Pure innocence radiates from the girl. It's so hard to see you like this. He wipes his eyes, gathering himself. There's something I need you to do, Mom. Please. What is it? I need you to remember where you put the key. What? You made a special key that would disable the system if you ever failed to log in once a week. The people who paid for the project, they sent me here to find it. She stares, blankly. If, if you can tell me that, they say they can save every life from now on so people never have to die again. Mom, do you remember the key? I don't know what you're talking about. She says flatly. Please, Mom, you have to. If you can't remember this one thing, everything you worked for will be lost. Wait, why would I have told you where to find it before? I... His eyes drop. I wasn't around much when you were alive. Why not? I don't know. I guess I assumed I had all the time in the world. Now that you're gone... All the things I was doing, the things that seemed so important, it was all such a waste. She stares at him, her lips pursed, hesitant. I came home as soon as I heard. They found you unconscious in your lab. I'm sorry. I don't know. I can't help you. It's okay, Mom. I understand. You're only a girl now, after all. How would you know? The girl muses a moment. You said you'd answer my questions. Of course. So, this is a fragmented memory. That's why I can't ride the rides. Can those people see us? Can they hear us? I don't know. I was never as brilliant as you, Mom. At least not in the same way. I don't know how your inventions work. It's all magic to me. How many times have you tried this? This is the first time. They said I might have to gain your trust and make you happy before I start looking for the location. If I'm honest, they don't seem like the kindest people. I haven't even met any of them face to face. You never told me you were in business with a corporation. 
I always assumed you were still working out of your garage, just like when I was a kid. Come to think of it, they didn't tell me what I was going to see in here, so maybe they really don't know. She sighs, closing her eyes. I miss Tommy. A strange noise echoes through the air, and an arc of light illuminates the darkness for a half second. The silhouette of a little boy emerges from the darkness. Leaves and grass crackle under his feet. Hey, Kay. He waves. She grins, patting her hand on the space next to her on the wooden bench. The boy gleefully romps over and sits down, his feet dangling next to hers. Where are we? Who's that? The boy's dimpled smile shows a look of what appears to be gratitude. Curiosity and fascination are written across every inch of his face. Apparently, that's my son. You're an uncle. What? The boy looks back and forth between the two others. I guess I see the resemblance. How did you do that? One thing they did say was that it's supposed to be just you and me in here. Tommy leans over with his hand covering his mouth, whispering. Not too bright though, huh? <laughs> Hey, son, if you don't get the information you need, will they send you back here? Yes. They told me they'll keep sending me in until the clock runs out. They only have another two days, before the emergency deletion protocol kicks in. Will I be reset? I don't know. Okay, so, I have an idea, but you need to listen carefully. Tommy bubbles with excitement in his seat, a wide smile on his face, nodding his head and kicking his feet faster. Uh-oh. Kay's thinking. He sings. She smirks. The man stares, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Find out if they can hear us, but don't ask directly. You need to know what they know about what happens in here, but don't let them know what you know. That was a bit confusing. Do you get it? He nods. I'm not that dense, Mom. I don't know what the interface looks like, but maybe... Find out if they saw Tommy in here. The boy turns his face to the man, smiling ear to ear. Mm-hmm. Good plan. And even if I get reset, don't waste my time when you come back, okay? Just tell me what's going on right away, so I can help you. Okay. He takes a small screen out of his pocket, and a red button appears on the display. Wait. She interrupts. Was I a good mom? Did I raise a good boy? You... you were more than I deserved. She looks down at her brother, who offers a smile and nod. Yeah, I think he's okay. At least now I won't be alone. She smiles and locks eyes with her son. Good luck, buddy. You always used to call me that. His thumb hovers over the button. I love you, Mom. I'll make you whole again if it takes the rest of my life. I'll find a way. Promise. I love you too, Harry. See you on the other side. He taps the screen. The two children huddle together at the picnic table as their world goes dark. He wakes up in a stark white room, laid back in a padded chair, the sore sensation of a recently installed metal interface port in the base of his skull. A voice emanates into the room from some hidden source. Welcome back, Dr. James. There's been an anomaly. You will be debriefed. This session will end upon completion of your report, and we will begin again immediately. Time is of the essence. Please advise when ready to proceed. I'm ready. A massive data spike occurred approximately three minutes and 47 seconds before the end of the previous session. Please explain. I don't know. Nothing changed. Can you describe what the cause may have been? Dr. James. Your vitals are showing signs of sudden anxiety, indicating you may be hiding important details of your last interaction. I will ask again, what event prompted the introduction of new data into the simulation? I, I'm sorry, I... His mother's words echo in his mind. Don't let them know. I'm actually feeling pretty nervous right now, to tell you the truth. I'm telling you people I really have no idea what you're referring to. I also don't appreciate being treated like some... some kind of... We need you to remain calm for you to properly interface with the system, Dr. James. I think I might have something for you after the next session. I just made a few mistakes. Very well. Your nutrient infusion is complete and you're ready for your next dive. Okay. Remember, Dr. James, 
We are running out of time. The fate of your race depends on this. I understand. Restarting the simulation in three, two, one. The white room expands in his vision, light blooming and overtaking everything. The sounds of the night at the carnival slowly creep back into his ears, the whiteness melting away to reveal a dusky sky. As he makes his way toward the familiar picnic table, he notices new, colorful lights blinking in the distance. Pleasant musical notes float on the night air, along with the chattering of people at various carnival stalls playing games. Harris walks cautiously toward the picnic table. Tommy sits there alone, happily eating vanilla cake, watching the festivities. I never really liked chocolate. I'm more of a vanilla man myself. The boy hastily shoves another chunk of cake into his mouth, gulping it down. He stares at the mangled mess on his plate. Man, it's nice to have cake again after all these years. I miss the real thing, but this will do. Greater than vice bro. Always wear your seatbelt, especially on a carnival rides. He grins, looking out at the people again. Getting pretty crowded in here, huh? It's okay. My big sister, she's expanding the place. She got the rides running about a week after you left. She says there'll be a working day and night cycle by next year. Rebuilding the sun? That's gonna take some time. What do you mean? I was just here five minutes ago. I thought you sent your case, kid. Shouldn't you be a little sharper than this? Keep up, bro. Honestly, I'm lost. He looks around in awe. I'm not much good outside of an operating room. Anyone here need brain surgery? I'm pretty good at that. Harris watches as an elderly man materializes in a crack of blue light next to a prize booth, his face immediately lighting up with joy. The old man runs up to the counter, pointing with childlike excitement at a large plush animal. Between you and me, I was a really smart one. Well, except for the whole seatbelt thing, of course. My sister is pretty good, though. Did a great job with this place. If I was alive, I would have helped her out. The boy surveys the area as Harris stands bewildered. All these people are new arrivals. That old guy was taken by liver cancer, just like Grandpa. That lady over there? He gestures toward a woman playing skee-ball. She was accidentally shot by a family member on a hunting trip. He points to another man, awkwardly riding a small horse on a carousel. That guy got the death penalty for something he did for sure. He got a bunch more people a few minutes ago. Another mass shooting. The boy's face lowers in disappointment. There she is. Kay walks up and places a hand on Tommy's shoulder, instantly lifting his spirits. So did they learn anything? I, I don't think so. They asked me about an anomaly, an unknown data spike. Those idiots have no idea what I was working on. I can't blame them. It's really beyond most people's comprehension, anyways. I don't understand. How? That's okay. You will in time. They all will. Everyone dies sooner or later, right? The man feels a chill run down his spine. When you left, I did some thinking. Remembering, actually. Turns out, I had contingencies in place. She smirks. Didn't I teach you always to have a plan B? That was one of your mantras. So, what do I do now? What do I tell them? You won't be needing the key. This place. It's barely a shadow of what I designed it to be. But you can tell them that heaven will remain online. But how is this possible? Who are all these people? There's more to science than those empty suits and their machines could ever imagine. Just call it magic if you want. Another spark of light flashes, and a small, sad-looking girl wanders out of the darkness. Tommy waves her over to sit next to him, and she hops onto the bench, eyeing the cake on the plate, a hesitant smile growing on her face. People have always had to wonder about heaven. Don't you think that's kind of sad? Mom, what have you done? I cut out the middleman. Now there's no more guesswork. No more worrying about things like... 
fate or judgment. Kay walks up to her son and takes his hand. Don't worry, buddy. I got more than enough to rebuild. I'll take it from here. Go on and live your life now. I'll see you back here when you're done. This is going to be one big birthday party. Hello there, my friends. Mr. X Dreams here. I hope you enjoyed this story. I've really been working on this and thinking about it for quite a while. Not too long ago, a month or two ago at the time of recording this, I had a dream shortly after my mom told me that she was dying and that it was time to truly understand that we would probably soon have to let her go. Now, thankfully, at the time of this recording, she's still fighting, she's still kicking, and all the donations to the GoFundMe have tremendously helped along with the well wishes and the words of encouragement. I so still appreciate you all for that so much, more than you can imagine. But I had a dream where I was talking to a fragmented version of my mother as a child, and that dream slowly blossomed and was built into the story that you just heard. So I wrote this story as a means of not only helping myself and my family cope with the depth and sadness of the situation and of the dream that I had, but also to spread a message of sorts. It might seem a little hidden after all the extra plot that I created and added in there, but I wanted to make it clear. Don't be like Harry, the man in the story. Don't wait until it's too late to reach out to a loved one. Don't assume that you have more time, because in this world, not a single moment is promised to any of us. So like I always say, appreciate, talk to, and show love to your loved ones. Let them know you love them as often as you can because you never know when the last opportunity will present itself. You don't want to let that thing go by. And I'll leave you with that, my friends. I hope you're doing well. I hope this message finds you well. You all know that I love you. By the way, by the way, let me know what you thought about the story itself in the comment section down below. And show some love to the guest voice actors I brought in to play the roles of Kay, Tommy, and the voice of the corporation. I think they all did a fantastic job. Anyway, take care my friends. I'm Mr. X, and may your nights be full of dreams. And by the way, all that talk of cake made me pretty hungry. Tonight's code word is cake. Work that into a comment down below so I can see you later, my friends. But I am here. <laughs> you am here? <laughs> <laughs> well, will people know why the carnival were ghosts? They'll know it at the end. It's a special twist. Why? Why?